Hi guys, this video is a quick introduction of all the EFB features that we have in our eJets family. EFB stands for Electronic Flight Bag and it is basically this tablet that is attached to the side window. First of all, let me show you how you can hide it. You can do so by clicking on the chart holder right here. And you can also do the same thing on the other side. Next, you can position the tablet in any way you want. And you can also pop it out by clicking anywhere on the left side of the screen. You can resize it. And we also have two other ways in which you can toggle the 2D view. Uh, you can go on the top explain menu and hit EFB. Or you can also go assign a key on your keyboard. So if you go to the settings keyboard type EFB here. You can assign any key to the toggle EFB1 pop-up. I assigned it to 0, so now if I hit 0 on my keyboard, I'm going to get the 2D pop-out like that. So first we've got the ground services and let's actually go outside for this. Okay, so let me bring up the EFB. Great, and now we can control all the doors. We can also toggle the ground objects, which are the cones and uh, chocks. And we can also toggle the engine covers. However, that is only possible if your engines are not running. And that would also toggle the remove before flight tags. And finally, we can also toggle the GPU. All right, let's turn it all off. And you can also toggle the doors by simply clicking on them. Next, we've got the weight and balance page. Here you have two ways of entering the data that is required to calculate the load sheet. First off, you can fetch the data from your most recently generated flight plan on SimBrief directly into the EFB, and this is really handy. All you need to do is make sure that you have enough signal. So for example, if you are high up in the sky, you will not have enough signal to receive that data. And next, you need to know your SimBrief pilot ID. If you don't know what your pilot ID is, I can show you right now. All you need to do is go to SimBrief, then go to account settings. And here under your SimBrief data, you'll find the pilot ID. So mine is 328221. So if we enter that here, enter and then request company load sheet. Okay, so we've loaded the flight plan, but the aircraft does not match. The problem is that we generated the flight plan with the E-170, but we are currently flying the E-195. So let's go back to SimBrief and load the cracked flight plan. Let's now go back to explain and try that again. So we will see that the aircraft is now correct and we've got the flight plan as well as the payload and the block fuel. Let's click on view load sheet. And now we'll see the aircraft representation with four cabin sections. Each of those numbers in those cabin sections represents the number of passengers and the numbers in the brackets represent how many of the passengers are children. Then we've got uh, forward and aft cargo hold, of course. And here you've got all the load sheet and all the important numbers. The most important one for us is the zero fuel weight and the takeoff CG because that's what we'll be entering in the FMS performance pages. So if you're happy with what you see, you can hit load plane. And we can verify the fuel, for example, which is loaded. If you don't use SimBrief or you just want to enter the weight and balance manually, you can do that as well. So let's enter the zero fuel weight and fuel weight. Or 
or you can also use payload instead of zero fuel weight. Perfect. Next, we've got the takeoff performance page. So if you used SimBrief to fetch the weight and balance data, you will also see that the airport will be populated automatically, otherwise you will have to enter it manually. The takeoff weight will always be populated whenever you hit the load plane button on the weight and balance page. Then we've got the runway, thrust, you can select the runway conditions and flaps. Next, let me enter the wind and temperature and Q and H. Enter. Compute. Great, now we've got the takeoff performance. We've got all our V speeds. And if we have a look at the PFD, the V speeds are normally displayed here, but they're currently not loaded and you can now go and enter them into the FMS or you can also send the vSpeeds from the EFB directly into the FMS. So let me show you how to do that. So on the EFB if you hit send to FMS and you go to the data link page you will now see that this will turn green meaning that there's data that you can download. If you hit that you will now see that the vSpeeds will populate on the PFD. Perfect. We can close this. The landing performance page is exactly the same as the takeoff performance, so we will be skipping that. And now we've got the checklists. The checklists in the EFB are written based on the manufacturer's standard operating procedures document. However, we know that airlines like to have their own slightly different checklists and you as a user might also want to modify them. So we are giving you a way to modify them in any way you want, uh, which I will demonstrate now. So to do that, uh, let's go into the aircraft folder, plugins, EFB, and there is a checklist template here. So if you open the document, uh, you'll find all the instructions for making your own checklists and seeing it on the EFB. All you need to do is take this file, rename it as the EFB checklists and put it in the aircraft folder. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this and put it right here and rename it EFB checklists. Now let's go ahead and open that. Let me delete all of this and I will now show you how you can make your own checklist. So first of all, if you put down an exclamation mark, uh, that will be a comment. So everything on that line after the exclamation mark will not be visible on the checklist. Then if we have the hash symbol, that will be the headline of the page and it will define that this is the beginning of a new page. Then if you have a checklist item one, and then you need to put a colon uh, before the response. Make sure to follow all the formatting instructions exactly as they should be because if there are any mistakes or if the formatting doesn't match, the checklist will not display correctly. All right, checklist item two, the response for that will be auto. It doesn't matter if you put a tab here or just a space, it will all work the same. What is important is that you have the first part, then you have a colon and then the second part. Then if you want to put an empty line, you can put the dollar sign. Then we can copy this a few times. And now we might want to put down a separator, which is an empty line followed by a full line of dashes. Here we could put a separator with a headline in the middle. 
So you do two hashes followed by any word which will then be in the middle of the line. Next, if we put down a new hash symbol, that will be in the next page. OK, I'm going to save this. And we can now go back to explain. And we can either reload the aircraft by going to the developer tab and reload the aircraft, uh, skip art reload. But there is a faster way. So again, if we go to the settings, keyboard, type in EFB. And now you can assign any key on your keyboard to the reload checklist. So I've got control C. So if I hit that, you can now see that I've got my own custom checklist. So you can see that there is an, a comment that is not visible, an empty line, a separator, a separator with a heading in the middle, and we've also got a second page. And next we've got Avitab, uh, which is a third-party plugin, which you need to download online and install and explain. And if you have it installed, it will be available in our EFB which you can then normally use as you would in any other plane. You can also rotate the EFB in case you have any vertical PFDs, for example. And if you want to go back to our EFB interface, uh, you simply hit return to EFB. All right, guys, I hope that this was helpful and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Hey, before you go, I would love to ask you something. Did you ever wonder how we create these digital planes that you fly on a daily basis? Why is this thing crashing sometimes? Or why is the performance of some add-ons much worse than others? These and many more topics are all part of our Not A Newsletter. If you join our community, you will learn all about it. Plus, you will be able to tell us directly how we can improve your flight sim experience. So make sure to get your first Not A Newsletter by signing up below.